I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night, wherever you may be watching this transmission. Guys, I got a really important article I kind of want to share with you guys. Get your feedback on it. Comment below, guys. Uh, guys, don't forget to set your reminders for uh, Mike in the Night, The Riddle. Set your reminder right here. Call in live. And what is The Riddle? We start unraveling The Riddle on Michael, Mike in the Night. Okay, let's go into this article here brought to us by BNN Bloomberg this morning. Uh, kind of important, kind of important. And we're looking at the Canadian angle of this. The entire Commonwealth is, is in an absolute dumpster right now, an economic dumpster right now when it comes to... Let's rephrase that. The entire Commonwealth is an entire economic dumpster fire. So let's see what's going on in this perfect storm. Risks rising with toxic pairing of debt joblessness cibc says now this is a bank coming forward and saying this and usually banks are very yeah no, no, everything's good don't worry nothing to see here buy more homes buy 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 we need to buy more homes get this economy going right but a lot of people don't understand that the canadian housing market um uh in in itself the bubble is so big that it's about it's it's about like one quarter of Germany's economy, you know, and if you look at it, it's just like, what, what? Yeah, our, our bubble is so big, Canada and Australia, and New Zealand, well, New Zealand's up to put the, the, but the population of New Zealand smaller, but Canada's bubble is so big that it's like a quarter of, of, of Germ Germany's economy, you'd be thinking, what, what? Yeah, it is, because it's the, that's how big the bubble is, so here it is, Evaluated housing debt combined with the surge of unemployment risks putting Canada in a precarious position amid the COVID shutdowns, said the head of domestic banking of Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. Now, yes, they're going to use COVID as a, a, a front-running uh, device for this to mask the bad loans, the bad decisions, the bad book-taking that these banks and big banks have been doing uh, uh, just to get numbers on the books so they could grow and then all the stock buybacks and all the Mickey Mousing they've been doing all, all these years. Great, let's just use Kobe as a front, right? We do have highly indebted Canadian consumers. Again, Canadian consumers can't don't have two nickels to rub together and we covered it on the channel. The average Canadian is 200 bucks away from insolvency. The average Australian is $408 away from insolvency. For every dollar an Australian makes, they owe two. And for every dollar a Canadian makes, they owe like almost, almost two. It's like $1.98 they owe back. And that's what's happening. Consumers are racking up debt left, right, and center. And we've been propping our economies on plastic. What? Credit cards. Oh, you can't afford that blender? Buy it. Get a credit card. Just, yeah, get a credit card. It's good for you. We've been, we've been talking about this for some time, and just un, under half Canadians live paycheck to paycheck, uh, who uh, says Laura, who oversees the Canadian Personal Business Banking at CIBC. Again, a lot of people need to take uh, more, instead of taking on more debt, they need to take on more credit counseling. If you add the people are no longer working in and generic cash flow, I don't think it makes for a toxic, toxic combination, that's going to be much more difficult to overcome longer this takes to resolve. Uh, Dory said she she's concerned about the buildup and stress among consumers that will only get worse until there is clarity on when the pan ends up, the pandemic ends up, and plans for recovery uh, begin to take shape. When is the pandemic pandemic or pandemic going to end, right? Her fears are noteworthy as she spent almost seven years as chief officer before moving to her current role on March 2nd, putting her in charge of CIBC largest division just as COVID crisis began disrupting the economy. I think it's been really tough on people, not just financially, but mentally. There you go. Me the mental dis di distortionist things going through our minds. There's just no, there's just so much stress in the system, she said on an interview on Monday. That stress, that stress will continue to build until we get a little more clarity about what happens next and when it happens. Again, guys, here's the deal. It's, it's a time game now. We're playing a time game. Oil, 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 all the oil stocks I sold last Thursday that crashed, that, that when oil crashed, have been going up steady. Oil stocks have been going up steady. Check out this video here called, you want to see this one. This one's really good. 
Canadian stocks, oil doing amazing. Why oil stocks are bulletproof? I was ready to buy on the dip today or tomorrow when, when, the dip, uh, when the major dip ended and stocks corrected. They're still going up. Check out the stock tickers I did the video on the other day. And you take a look at it with your own eyes and you tell me what, what, if I'm saying what I'm saying is right or wrong. Uh, so bank efforts, despite her concerns, uh, Daughtry sees the situation as being largely under, under control for now, thanks to bank efforts, including mortgage payment deferrals and unprecedented government relief programs. Canada's federal government has delivered 19.8 billion. That's 13.9 billion in income support to workers as of April 19. Wow. Wow. Shares of CIBC, Canada's fifth largest lender, have slumped 25% this year, more than 22% decline in the S&P and TSX Financials Index. The Toronto-based bank has provided more than 250,000 clients with deferrals for $20 billion in mortgages, credit cards, loans, and credit lines during the pandemic. It has approved $1.5 billion of government-backed loans, 40,000 small businesses clients under the federal government's Canada Emergency Business Account Program. Hey, I got something. I have an idea. Why don't they just freeze the carbon tax that we're paying? We're paying a phenomenal amount of parkour. We should be being paying an equivalent to U.S. currency and what U.S. is paying for their gas. We should be paying about 30 to 35 cents a liter for gas. But the carbon tax just puts it up astronomically so people are seeing the relief at the pumps because it's not a dollar 10 a dollar 20 anymore per liter but they're not seeing that the masking of the carbon tax that's on there that's actually pumping it up almost 30 to 50 cents a liter so there's a lot of gives and takes here right and and they should start maybe freezing the carbon tax for now to help uh alleviate strapped households uh stra cash strapped households right such relief efforts have made it difficult to identify any emerging credit trends. It's a bit early because all our deferral programs kicked in with the crisis started, she said. People would have normally go into delinquency. Buckets have had their payments deferred. So that's dangerous. Payments get deferred. Uh, payments get deferred. And when payments get deferred, guess what happens? They add that. It gets extended onto the mortgage. Mortgage rates, you're going to, who knows? They're going to have a fee to, to, to re. People maybe that have mortgages now might be in prison. That's a video to make in the future. Uh, still, Doherty uh, uh, said she's comforted by the fact Canada's don't appear to be ratcheting up their credit card bills or drawing from home equity lines credit yet because they're already maxed out despite a sar sharp surge in unemployment in recent weeks now let's go to uh better dwellings top story here from last night we were covering that on trends in the housing market last night we got uh, uh disconnection issues uh, here inception of index look at that so let's go here so right here toronto's real estate average sales price turns negative now Insolvencies in Greater Vancouver make double-digit climb, and Greater Toronto insolvencies rise over 18%. So you're seeing it here. So, all right. So people aren't tapping into these or using or because they're maxed out. So they have no more credit cards to use, right? Uh, since March, 5.97 million Canadians have applied for the government's emergency income support program for people who have lost income due to the the pan pandemic, a government official said last week, what we're seeing are Canadians acting really responsibly. They're cutting back on their on their their spend, and we're seeing things like credit card purchases volumes are down. She said, people uh, are not adding to their debt load because they can't. They're maxed out. But when we look at utilization rates too on things like HELOCs uh, on and whatnot, we don't see any increase there. Okay, we don't see increase on HELOCs. Let's go to Better Dwelling. GDP. They had a HELOC one here where people are tapping into their HELOCs many times back and forth. Canadian households already owe $1.76 for every disposable income. I'm sorry. I thought it was $1.95 at the beginning of the show. I'm sorry. I said for every dollar a Canadian makes, they owe $1.90. An Australian is like $2.06 for every dollar they make. Ha! Huh. 
Okay, okay, so let me take that back. Canadian households already owe $1.76 for every dollar in disposable income, one of the highest ratios among uh, advanced countries. The length of the crisis said it's going to probably be the most important determinant uh, in terms of what things look like in the future. So there it is here, guys. So our oil is being propped up. Everything's being propped up. Uh, they're pumping tons of cash in uh, to Canadian companies because I've been following this here and on this one right here, this video right here I did, uh, right here, oil stocks, bulletproof, right? I went over the stocks here that's right here. There's, a, there's an article here I need, I need to show you guys. It's kind of important because it relays back to what we're trying to get at here. 300% uh, oil crash. There's one. No, I think it's further ahead. Give me a sec here. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. You want to see this. Trust me. It's about right here. This is the article. Zero dollars forces Canada to shut down crude production. All the Canadian oil stocks I was buying and selling on dips and selling on highs, or what I feel is a high, zero bucks. But it doesn't reflect in the stock. How could anyone give financial advice when no one's playing by the book? Let me know what you guys think. I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks so much for joining me here, guys. And uh, subscribe if you like, and um, comment below. I read comments. We share uh, ideas on our live streams. Thank you.